In this video, I'm going to teach you the five most important principles for how to study anything academic. These are the same principles that got me through a degree in medicine and then when I went on to study a degree in dentistry as well. So if you're currently studying or you have exams or you're even just thinking about taking on an academic subject, by the end of this video, you should have the five key principles down to improve your study, make you a lot more effective and feel confident with it. And if you've got exams, then improve your grades as well. So I'm gonna do them in reverse order from least to most important. So let's just dive in. The first bit of advice is to ditch the notes. I know that it's a very feel good, yeah, I'm studying way of doing it, but it's actually really passive. And in a way, it's a really lazy way of doing it. Just by copying things and writing them out, you're hoping that your brain will absorb them, but it's actually not the best way to make them stick in your brain. So the solution to this is active recall. So this is a problem that I did when I was in my first year of medical school and didn't do very well in my exams at all because I thought that I could do it. But the problem is with academic subjects is that there's just so much volume there to study that it's just impossible to do that effectively for all the material. And not only that, it's not efficient. So let me show you the most efficient way to do it. And that is something called active recall. So what is active recall? Active recall is where you take the information that you've studied and then you come back to later time to revisit it. Now that can be in lots of forms. You can have some flashcards or you can ask yourself some questions ahead of time or maybe even go through some pre-selected questions on the subject. You can even take the notes that you originally read and then just cover them up and see what you can recite from memory. Now the reason it works so well is that it forces your brain to engage with the material and actually challenge yourself. Now when you get something wrong, even when you get it right and you weren't 100% sure, it affirms the knowledge. But when you get it wrong, it actually makes your brain a little bit annoyed at itself that it got it wrong. And that emotional connection to the information actually makes you remember it better. So what's the evidence behind active recall? Well, they have lots of studies that have been conducted on active recall studying methods versus the conventional way. And in studies, when they've compared retention rates for active recall study groups versus a cohort group who aren't engaging in active recall, and they found that the retention rates in the active recall group were 80% versus in the control study where they were just doing conventional methods, only 34% retention. So this first tip alone is gonna save you hours, if not days in study time, and it's gonna increase your retention by 46%, which is undoubtedly going to transfer to better exam grades. The next core principle is know what you need to know. Now this applies to anything from taking a long academic degree to reading a book. You need to know the information that's gonna be presented or required of you before you start. So the first port of call is to read the contents or the syllabus, whatever it is that's outlining everything that's gonna be taught and what you need to know. And that's because it practices a technique called pre-learning. And that is essentially preparing your brain for what's important or what it needs to pay attention to. It reminds me of a really good book I read by a guy called Richard Koch who wrote the 80-20 principle. And he talks about how he got a first in a degree at Oxford just by doing this technique. What he would do when he had a textbook to read for his course is he would start with the last chapter, read all of that, then go to the introductory chapter, read all of that, go back to the final chapter, read that again, just so that he can consolidate all the important things that he's gleaned from reading the introduction, and then he would maybe select some important chapters that he'd gleaned from the information that he'd read. And that meant by doing that technique, he got the information, he got the most important points, and he knew them well, and just got rid of all the unimportant, extra superfluous material that he didn't need to know. Basically, you need to know the exam outline too, because in universities, even in A-levels, they have set things that they should ask questions about. And when people who are writing the exams are looking for ideas for what to write about, this is the guideline and this is the list of things that they will use to inspire them to write questions about. So it just makes sense to be efficient and effective and make sure that you know those core things really well. Another core principle is to know your own learning style. Know thyself is probably one of the most important things for success in any academic career or in life in general, really. This is something known as VARC, so that's visual, oral, reading, and kinesthetic. And people are a different balance of those type of learning styles. It's important that you know which one suits you best. And there are loads of questionnaires that you can quickly take by Googling, and I've linked to one in the description below. But this is another area where I fell behind at the start because I didn't know the style that suited me best. And then when I took this online test, I realized that actually I'm a more of an oral, so audio, and a kinesthetic learner. But that helps you learn a lot about yourself. For example, now that I know that, I understand why when I buy flat pack furniture, my inclination is to just go and start building it straight away rather than reading 
in the guide. Or for example, why I retain books better when I consume them via audio versus reading them. And once you know what works, it does make a massive difference and you'll notice an improvement in your grades just from that alone. So I highly recommend that you go away and do a VARC questionnaire yourself. It literally takes five minutes and it will reveal a lot about your learning style and the ways that you should tailor your learning to suit you. The next scorecard principle is a bit out of left field, but actually very important. It's inspired by a quote, don't let your education get in the way of your learning. And essentially what he's saying is that formalizing education can make it very dry. And by having to go through prescriptive information that they think is important, takes away your natural curiosity and lust for the subject. So the important action point here is to read stuff outside of your prescribed learning. It keeps everything absolutely fresh. For example, at medical school, you might need to learn the in-depth processes of cellular pathology. And that can be a bit dry from a textbook. However, then if you go away and learn at some of the advances and the exciting new developments in that field, that will at least keep it fresh so that you can relate the information that you're reading to that subject and you can kind of see how it applies and makes it a bit more exciting in the way that you consume it. And so that brings us on to our final core principle, which is work smart, plan your time and avoid burning out. When it comes to study, quality is better than quantity. Early in medical school, I made the mistake of thinking that it's just all about the hours. Just the more that you can get in, having loads of coffee, staying up late, not getting much sleep, just do the time and you will ingest all the information. And it couldn't be further from the truth. However, if you spend just a few hours of really diving deep into a subject, attacking it from all angles, really getting involved and engaging with the material, it will stick so much better than just spending hours absolutely going over it and just passively hoping that it's gonna land. So that means in a study day, it's really important to take a long two hour break, get in nature, just go out and take a walk and completely refresh your mind and take your mind off things. But to do that, we need planning. So I want to introduce a new concept to you, which is the retrospective study timetable. Often what we do is plan ahead of time and we have these amazing plans for all this studying that we're going to do and cover absolutely everything. However, if we flip that method on its head and actually look back at what we've done rather than what we plan to to do, it makes it significantly less stressful and actually more productive in the long term. So I'm actually currently making a video of exactly how to practice the retrospective timetable, which is going to appear here in the next few days. So have a look at that and I'll look forward to seeing you in that video.